a reflection is always incomplete. So how do you get to the deepest levels of your true nature? How do you see past the surface of the reflection into the essence of who you truly are? Get up, get up. Everybody move. You know, many people that experience the deepest levels of truth never really have much to say about it. And I think this is because the people that know about it only know about it through experience. You see, the deepest levels of yourself, the deepest levels of the source of all creation, and yes, you as a body and a mind and a, your directed attention, that's all created, right? Because that appears in front of you. So that has a, a source. But when you're talking about or experiencing the truth of the source itself, well, there's, not just, there's just not that many words there. And so today I want to talk to you guys about the fact that you're not going to really hear much about the deepest levels of truth even if you hear a whole lot about the subconscious mind and energy and invisible uh your 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 spirit guides and, and uh god okay even if you hear tons and tons and tons and you fill your mind with all of that stuff uh which is all good and gravy and all um very supportive on your quest to actually experience the truth or the deepest uh, truth. And, um, and I say your quest to, to the deepest truth with confidence because I know beyond the shadow of a doubt through my experience, my right now experience, that all beings, human or not, are headed towards discovering for themselves the truth about the source of themselves. Uh, and um, it's very important to know the difference between searching for, like searching to know the truth and searching to become or be the truth or uh, remove everything from yourself and from your consciousness that is not in line with the deepest truth. And, um, you know, it's funny because the guru, right? The guru, the, the, the spiritual master, the one who is living in the experience. When he or she is asked, what's the true nature of the self? What's the true nature of the source of all creation? They usually give some sort of metaphorical type of answer, right? They'll say, there's no tree inside of a tree. There is only a tree. There's no cloud inside of a cloud. There's no you inside of a you. There's just you. Now, what does that mean? If we really look at that, what exactly is that telling us? Well, in terms of our actions, it tells us that everything we do, voluntary and involuntary, is a reflection to the source of the source. And everything we see voluntarily and involuntarily, or what we bring our attention to on purpose and what seems to grab our attention. All of that is a reflection of the source to the source. But a reflection, just as you might use a mirror, a reflection is always incomplete. It doesn't matter how big the mirror is, it doesn't show you the inside, it shows you the surface. Think about that. Everything you see in your world, in the world, is a reflection of your true nature, yet a reflection is always incomplete. So how do you get to the deepest levels of your true nature? How do you see past the surface of the reflection into the um, essence of who you truly are? Well, hopefully I can shed some light on this for you. And how I want to do so is by having you follow me in doing something right now. It will only take a quick second. And as you follow my words, as you, as you follow me through this, I want you 
to pay very close attention not to the images that pop up in your mind, but actually where you are seeing from. So here we go. First, just notice how your body is. Just notice how your body is functioning. And I want you to notice, keenly notice, that your senses, sight, smell, taste, uh, touch, hearing, they don't need your help. And just notice that. Don't think about it. Just notice. Notice how your senses fully function without any demand from yourself. Also, I want you to notice, okay, that the stream of thoughts that seems to constantly go, that that stream of thoughts also doesn't need you to turn it on. It doesn't need your demand for it to function. You don't need to turn on a switch. And just notice, don't think about it. Just notice. Also, I want you to notice that what everything that you can see going on within yourself, be it emotions or the stream of thoughts or a, a, an insight, a hunch that you get, everything that you see is slightly different from where you're seeing from. Pay attention. Where you're seeing from, it's like everything is reporting to a source, but the source does not need to report to everything else. Everything just comes. Notice this within yourself. Don't think about it, just notice it. Your thoughts, my words, the functions of your senses, all of these things that make up your life, they report to you. The feeling of your body, that reports to you, but you don't report to them. And you need not command them come report to you for them to do their natural thing. Try to just notice without any interpretation from you whatsoever. Just notice this. And if interpretation comes and it's very loud, just notice that as well, but don't touch it. Notice you don't need to try to breathe. You don't need to try to keep your balance. It happens naturally. And now without leaving this state of simply being aware, I want you to turn your awareness to awareness itself. In other words, pay attention to attention. Just for a moment. And don't think about it. Just do it. Become aware of awareness itself. Now, I want to slowly bring you, you could say, back to where you were before you followed my words. And see for yourself that as you start to uh, become the thinker again, as you start to become the one that interprets everything and that gives everything a name again, because for a second there, if you really followed my words, then things started to lose their name and everything so sort of started to become a part of one big thing called life. And as you start to come back to your normal self, your normal, uh, the normal sense of yourself, you can see that you take shapes. It's like the formless, true essence of yourself takes a shape 
and it forms itself into um, the thinker and the doer and the responder and the reactor. And uh, you take all of these shapes. Well, you're taking thousands and thousands upon thousands of shapes per day. And this habit of, ta of constantly taking shapes is precisely what makes it hard to understand when someone is explaining the true nature or the true essence of life or the true essence of spirit and spiritual understanding. Okay? A good way to really understand and start to experience the truth for yourself is to take moments throughout your day, especially when you're working, uh, doing dishes, or doing some sort of task that your muscle memory is enough to keep it going efficiently, uh, driving, take moments to simply be aware of awareness without giving anything a name, without calling it a name. Don't call it, okay, now I'm going to give awareness to awareness only because then it, be, it starts to become an image in your mind. So don't do that, but simply just do it, like I said. Um, and you know, it, it might sound a little contradictory, but it's not. So, so, if you take moments throughout the day to bring your awareness to the simple, um, everlasting awareness that's always here, that's here before you interpret something to be what you decide it is, here during that duration of when it is, you know, functioning the way that you think so, and then afterwards when you forget about it, that awareness that's always here, but is, is simply not involved in any aspect of life whatsoever, except awareness, except pure awareness without any interest in anything, any involvement in anything whatsoever. Bringing your attention and keeping it on awareness itself, pure awareness itself, is a great way to begin experiencing the true essence of yourself, the true essence of the deepest uh, truths within yourself, and uh, understanding uh, deep quotes and understanding, you know, the deepest truths that are shared by the gurus of the world, okay? So I just wanted to give you that, uh, that exercise and I wanted to uh, leave you with this practice of simply bringing your awareness to awareness itself. See if you can attach your sense of identity to pure awareness. See if you can basically look for the source of your I. When you say I, I'll call you back, I'll be right back, um, I'm busy, I'm bored, I, 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 all of these different I's that take shape throughout your day. I'm driving, I'm meditating, I'm watching TV, I'm I, 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 right? All of these I's. Any I whatsoever. See if you can attach your identity to pure awareness, to awareness which is not involved in life. See if you can be nothing or nobody um, on purpose and try and keep yourself from taking shape. You'll be surprised it's a little difficult when you're first beginning, but doing this practice has uh, brought me many great insights and allowed me to create the courses that I've created online and to uh, be a much better meditation coach and, and things of this nature. So uh, this practice is very, very, very practical for any walk of life whatsoever. It does not matter what your job is, does not matter what your religion is, does not matter what your belief system is. This does not undermine any other practices that you have or any belief system that you have. It simply reveals to you the very true essence of your own self. And so, um, you know, without letting the video get too, too long, I will leave you with that. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Peace and love. So if you're new to Ufulu Child, make sure you subscribe to get more Mind Mastery content dropped straight into your YouTube feed. If you enjoyed today's episode of Get Your Mind Right, let me know by clicking that like button, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Peace and love.